Yeah, nah, I'm here. Took some time. Can't get the overlay to work on the YouTube stream, but it is what it is. I am here though. And then off. Of course, immediately forgot a thing I was supposed to do beforehand. But that is fine. Can't remember every time. Everything should work nonetheless. No issues to be found here. Let's, uh, let's get the uh, music just a tad more silent in my own ears. Just a bit rough. Alright. Cool. But I'm Vile Neon, as some of you may know. And I'm here to play some Darling Among the Dust, a solo RPG, solo journaling RPG to be exact, where I am the last surviving, at least in a large area, last surviving human on Earth. Just come out from a fallout shelter after I've eaten all the food, all the water, and trying to live my best life in what is left of the world. Hey, there you go. The overlay started working by itself. Ain't that crazy? Not gonna actually see anyone chatting. Perfect. Yes, that's what we're doing. I that's why I have some cards down here, although this is not the best card type way, and I'll be totally out of luck if I need to shuffle cards back in into the deck. But for the purpose of just drawing cards, this is fine. This is fine. And then I also technically could need a Jenga tower, but I'll do my own version of rolling dice instead. And we'll see then, based on the dice rolls and the Jenga tower, aka our dice rolls, we'll see how long we survive, if we do. It's going to be probably some rougher content in that sense, as death, hunger, and all those. So survival type beats where we're not going to have a lot of things for ourselves. All right. So let me let me quickly read the preamble here for this and set set the tone. You are the darling. All around you, skyscrapers and buildings remain like shed exoskeletons. Vines trail up the sides of structures, tendrils penetrating their interiors through blown out windows. You're alone. Your muscles had strained as you pushed open the door of the fallout shelter. You hid, safe and sequestered in a prison of your own making, until your dwindling supply of food pushed you to emerge. Now you pass from city to city, searching for any sign that you are not the last of humanity. And that is the basic setup. Background story for us. And how we will go through about this? We will roll a six-sided dice first to see how many cards we're gonna draw per day or per action type. And we'll see a bit how that works out. I haven't actually read any of these because that is part of the fun in solo RPGs. So I'm not 100% sure how it goes, but I really can't know either. Cool. Let us start by rolling the d6. Now let's get out of studio mode here. And dice roller. You have a one d6. All right. And a six. So we start off with six instances of things to happen today. Uh, six events day slash section one. Uh, we want a bit larger on the text here. There we go. That is more acceptable, readable. So we have a six events, aka we draw six cards. Let's do it one by one. And I want to interact here. Oh, 
Oh no, we can draw them all like this. Uh, let's change the order a bit. We do want them to be in order anyway. Like this. There you go. First card is the King of Spades. What does the King of Spades wish to tell us? Oh, here it is. It's right in front of you before you even realize that you stumble upon it. A massive creature, all spindly limbs and branching antlers, hunches over a fresh kill that still licks weakly. The creature tears flesh from bone, wet slurps, and cartilage cracking impossibly loud in the silence. As it lifts a piece of meat up to its maw, its teeth glistens with flesh and blood. Alright, so we immediately start off with the world being a bit more fucked up than I thought. I thought we were going to have more of a just survive in the elements type thing with loneliness and stuff like that. But no, but we do have some actual stuff in there. Very cool. Let's see if I can copy this into the thing or it does not let me. It does. Uh, not in a nice way. All right, let's not do that then. So anyway, event one, monster, antler, blood. Let's keep that in mind. Uh, we'll write, write this down as we go as well. Uh, how does it say? Uh, do not discard this card. Right, yes. So another thing I guess as to note here is if I draw all four kings before I finish the game, aka I draw the Ace of Hearts, I think. Ace of Hearts, I think I need to win the game and then I need to do some a few things before that. But if I draw all four kings, that means I die and the game is over. And also, if my uh, proverbial Jenga tower falls, then I also die. Those are the die endings for me. So we have found that. But how do we deal with this? How do we deal with this? Do they have a separate question for us how we do? Hmm. Yeah, okay, so it does not actually exactly have a question for us, but we can use this time for us to check out what type of character we are. I have in mind, I guess if someone was both lonely enough to be in sitting in a fallout shelter and to uh, survive it, have the ability to uh, have enough money for that, that's what I'm trying to say, is requires it to be, I would wager, let's have a man in his 30s. Uh, let's have them work in the tech field worked in the tech field uh, got their company bought out for millions and after that they sequestered themselves from regular old society And built themselves a bunker. And happened to be inside there at the sudden. Not entrance, the sudden. What now? Sudden, let's call it the appearance of the apocalypse. Apocalypse. There you go. Those are words. 
These are the words we're looking for. So, stream does seem to work fine. Why does it keep wanting to me about the KBS being too low? Well, as long as it works. As long as it works. So, what we are doing next then. So, we are meeting. We are a man in his 30s. And we see this monster with horns snapping an animal in its tusks. Where do we? Where are we? Is this like just after we've come out? Sure, 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 sure. Let's be uh, kind of in the center of a small town. Something akin, akin to a bit of Wild West elements, aka like the one big street in the middle of the city, or that being the whole village, and that uh, or man here has built a his bunker right smack dab middle in the city so where you could both have both have some food like the ease of access like in regular life and then he had the perfect bunker right under him there maybe he even owned several of the shops there and had entrances in all of them so, uh, what do we name, 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 name. All right, let's do, where do we have behind the name, please? Let's take from there the random name generator. Marzell, eh? All right, Marzell is pretty good. Marzel. Marzel eyed. Eyed the coffee cups still on the table in his previously favorite diner. One he used to own. the thought of what had happened to the lovely uh, waiter Gretel rather the life of the place had crossed his mind multiple times he had there had been no time to call anyone to his bunker the radio only blasted a warning for 60 seconds And there was no time. After Marzell had realized the end of times was here, there was only three seconds left before silence. The world had fallen to silence. The air outside the bunker was fresh. Yet, now that he breathed more freely, he noticed a stench of iron. One 
That was familiar, yet almost forgotten. That was blood. Right outside. A massive creatures with a horn of flesh and ragged bones crunched a my crunched a mighty elk in its fangs. Sinew snapping, bones crushed. Yet another sixty seconds, and Marcel was alone in the bunker again. All right, perfect. That was a very good start. So we really need to care about the king. So that's something we want to keep on the table here. So let's move it down here. Oh, let's keep it up here. Oh, you can't even see it down there. So up here is where it needs to be. And that's only one of six. Crazy. All right, next one. I do need a sip. Sip of water right here in between. <sighs> ah. That's some good. Good, good, good. Spicy water, as they say. Next card. Oops. And it is a Jack of Hearts. What does a Jack of Hearts wish to tell us? The Jack of Hearts. Hearts is the last one. All right. It says, You stumble upon skeletal human remains, blown out buildings, abandoned cars and crumbling infrastructures around you but it's the first evidence you've seen that humankind didn't simply vanish off the face of the planet why do you think these are the only remains you've been able to find where do you think the others have gone pull from the tower okay let's start by pulling from the tower aka AKA rolling dice. So what we will do is I will have 10 D 10 and for ones and twos, I remove a dice and for tens, I add a dice. I've not perfectly math this out, but I hope this won't end immediately. Well, if it did, then I fumbled my dexterity in this case for this. All right, let's roll 10d10. Let's see how many we have remaining. Oh, you can't see that. Let me put the dice on top. So we got one removed, one added. So we stay at 10. Yes, one removed, one added. We'll stay at 10. Perfect. Let's write that down at the top here. Uh, we have 10 dice left. Oh, I have an extra text on top of my stream. We have 10 dice left. Don't really need that leveling on EU West text there, eh? Uh, let's write down there. Darling among the dust. That doesn't fit. Let's make it larger. 
save. All right, new try, darling on the dust. Perfect. Uh, yes, so event two is uh, human remains, first one he has found. And why are they the first ones? This is a bit different for us since it's immediately here, but let's say then a few days has passed and we are as uh, also bold these make this smaller like so we don't really need to know that exactly but these are more important these all right so let me make this a bit bigger so we can have it further up all right and we did so marzel took another week to gather more courage to venture outside again he didn't want to meet the big the organchan danger he had thought long and hard It's a weird thing being able to name a creature. It was a childlike wish of his. It would be cool to discover a new creature, a new Species. But now he thought it was silly. Something he never should have wished for. He named the creature. Oh, let's see. We have King of Spades, so. Flesh Horn. Very unimaginative, but the best he could think of. Uh, Marcel found only the bare minimum supplies in town. It seemed some humans must have survived the survived instant death. All the most of the food was gone in the stores. He had to go to the next town over, and only when he got there did he realize how surprising. It was that he had not seen any human remains. Here in the neighboring town, there was but one skeletal remain missing. 
most of its left leg. You could see how jagged the edges were. He hoped the person's end had been swift. Marcel thought that it must be other creatures like the flesh horn that was behind the disappearance of all remains. There had been no remains left of the elk when he came out from the bunker. Perfect. That's a great second event. Event number three. I don't need to have that many enters. One more though. Oh. How am I hungry again? It's crazy. Just ate a little bit. Absolute weirdness. Crazy, crazy weirdness, I say. Alright, let's see. And then... Oh, I forgot the thing on screen. I can't probably see anything with that then. Let's get rid of that. But next event, what cards do we have for us? Let's remove that one. Three of spades. The heat is nearly unbearable. Sweat drips from you and the moisture draws nearby insects to your skin. The insects are much too large, with pincers that bite through your flesh, seeking the blood within you. They begin to swarm, biting as they move. How do you try to get rid of the bugs? Are you successful? Pull from the tower. Alright, so rolling time. And we had 10 dice, so we shall roll the 10 again. So we remove one. So we are left with nine. Guess I got right here. Uh, pulled from the tower, nine dice left. Event number three, big, uh, big bugs with large pincers out for your blood. How do you survive? How do we survive? That's a fantastic question. We are trying to survive. It's very hot. Very hot. Wait, I remember it's very hot. Maybe we took the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've been waiting. Waiting for us to be forced to move along. But because we know we had a big stretch to cover before the next town. Next town over. And we didn't want to do it. But our tiny little, what are they called? Like water supply is running low. So we have to do it. We have to go on in there.
heat kept drenching Marzell in sweat. Water supply was running running dangerous Lilo. Marcel had pushed it forward for too long already. The air didn't cool like he had hoped, but instead it might have become even hotter. Marcel decided to start the trek at sunrise. Night was probably too dangerous, he wagered. He didn't want to run in to no, no flesh horn if he could help it. The long trek didn't only bring heat shock. It brought a new type of enemy. A swarm of gargantuan bugs. Marzell wasn't Weemish around bugs. In fact, he had been one of those kids who loved bugs and handling them. So at first, he didn't pay too much heed. Thought they were just a swarm of low cost or some sort. But indeed, they were after him. So how do we get rid of the bug? So what was the plan? Uh, when the swarm covered the sun and soon Marzell he ate pinch after pinch all drawing blood was like uh Beetles, nah, not beetles, like tongs stuck to his skin, ripping pieces with them. And for each drop of blood that he lost, thirst was quenched in the box with nowhere to go he hoped throwing the water in the air and all over him might give him some repose and it did, but just for a moment. Uh, in the end, Marcel had to bear with most of it for a minute 
managing to cover himself in the tarp he had brought for night cover only having to deal with a few ten of them inside of it instead of thousands and thousands all right marzal survives another day now with a lot of scars all over his body Uh, a little stretch. Uh, nice. So I've been going for 40 minutes. All right. Let's get to the next event. What do we have in store? So we need a new card so four spades then right next door you come across a nest with three perfectly round eggs the protein they provide will be welcome but it hints towards the presence of an unaccounted for creature what sort of creature you think provided the eggs all right so no danger for us which is good event number four uh, we call this the perfect round eggs what sort of creature laid these here Uh, at breakfast, Marcel pondered what, what had laid the perfectly round eggs. If they hadn't been inside of what looked like a bird's nest, he probably wouldn't have even picked them out as eggs in the first place. It's a lot of spelling errors. Their taste was egg. Um. Marcel didn't know what he expected. This was welcome. He hoped that this wasn't any crazy creature that could now find him based on that he had consumed the energy of their young of their unborn. The eggs were too large for any bird so far in the country. And roundness was very much not normal. Spheres twice the size of not bowling balls because that would be absolutely freaking huge. But I'm looking for the word in size of a billiards ball. There you go, that's the word. Whatever this uh, f 
feathered creature was. Most probably wasn't friendly. Another. This time. Maybe it was flesh feather. The whole thought disgusted him. Alright, doesn't need to be longer than that. What we do get, then a good idea of the world some more. Alright, event number five for the first section. Hey, what did it say here again for drawing this? Oh, okay, okay, yeah, so it's more like... More like we just do these and then we know if we lived or not, because you have to do all of them. Okay, perfect. But we survived, and let's grab on the next card. Six of hearts. While digging through the rubble of a building to see what supplies you can find, you find a broken picture frame. It depicts a smiling family, and it must have once sat on someone's desk. What do you think happened to your family? How often do you think of them? Uh, stumbled on a... Is that a message? No. Stumbled on a... Picture frame of a family. Do you think of your family? What do you think happened to them? I think it's an easy question for us. Uh, he hasn't really been in contact with anyone. Uh, he didn't have any loved ones in general. Uh, close ones. Some loved ones are like parents. Maybe they're not around anymore. Uh, both of his parents had already had already lost all their capabilities to understand the world around them before the apocalypse their minds slowly deteriorated by one of the worst diseases known to man dementia ask alzheimer's he hoped they had gone quick and none the wiser. They had been all he had. After all, he hadn't had much time to start a new life. Or he had barely found himself. No time to find someone to love forever. Selling the company, his life work, had left him empty, but satisfied. This new town had been his start, and he had made some connections like the hostess and the barber but they were nothing more than friends that's good enough 
Maybe. It's not necessarily sad. Seems to have a... He's just about to get his own life in uh, shape. Well, or finding himself, rather. And then the world ended. And he's the only one left. Last card, please. And the three of diamonds. Where are you, Mr. Diamond? There. Headaches have been plaguing you for days now. An ice pick through the temple would be more pleasant. Perhaps it is due to something in the air. How do you distract yourself from the pain? Pull from the tower. All right. So nine dice left. Not nineteen, but one. That's quite surprising, to be honest. You only keep hitting like one every time. Still have a nice nine left. Uh, massive headache. How do you live with it? Pulled from that tower. Nine left. How does Marzell deal with? This absolutely massive headache, maybe born from something in the air, maybe hurtled from all the activity he's done, maybe from the bugs that bit him, maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So. Whence and how shall we do this? His headache will be taken care of by what? Let's change it to the next album, please. Side B. Cool. Um, what was I gonna check? Uh, this one thing. I'll check that in between. I think about. Think about how to deal with. How to deal with this. Yeah. Not really sure whatsoever. Now let's take away the dice again. Hmm. Maybe we'll have him walk around with a mask. That sounds fitting. Maybe it was... Oh, let's take bolting away. Maybe it was the air. Maybe it was the food he ate. The drink he drank. He was sporting a massive headache. Or even thinking about the pain. It was difficult. He had seen the times during the, uh, what's it called? Uh, not infection. 
pandemic. During the pandemic. I'd seen at times during the pandemic. Loneliness and heartiness that led to death. He Marzel rummaged through several stores through willpower alone. The pain dulled his vision, but he was very clear in his goal. He found some masks to wear and did so promptly. He didn't really know if it was if it was wearing the masks or the chains of scenery. But his headache was gone a few days later. Alright, that's good. Nice. That's the first set of stuff dealt with. Took us an hour as well. Pretty good. I don't feel like I need a break. Just, just yet, so let's keep going for this second set of things. Let's keep going, let's keep going. So, our next set starts with a rolling. So we have nine dice left there. I remember that and I wrote that down, so no worries there. But let us roll a 1d6. I won. Second set of events. One event. And what do we get from this set then? So back to OBS. Let's get the dice away. Interact with the cards. Draw one. And it's a queen of hearts. What does Queen of Hearts want from us? As you walk through the desolate streets, you come across a newspaper stand. While largely destroyed, a few papers remain from the day you entered your bunker. The front page reports of soar on soaring inflation, but nothing to indicate the impending disaster. How did you know it was time to enter your bunker? Did you try to get other people to come with you? Why didn't they believe you? Why didn't you try harder? Uh, pull from the tower, alright. So, we have already dealt with this, so we don't have to really think about it. Uh, I didn't mean to move that away. I mean it meant to roll again. So we have 9d10 left. And let's roll. Oh, uh, set to visible as well. And uh, now that is more cards going away. I thought there was more twos than that. Was the five then? That's fine, okay. Uh, okay. So that'll be eight dice left. Event one. Uh, why were you in 
that bunker. Why didn't you save anyone? Did you try? Pull from the tower. Eight dice left. I'm even not right any more than like we dealt with this in the first one. But we will add just one line or two. Right. So we will add in, let's call it. Uh, there was some more remorse and that Marzell had to be alone. Shame that he couldn't save anyone, even though he knew there had been no time. Yep. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll need to do this. I'll I'll just have it like this. All right. Third set of events. Another D six. One D six. Another one event. One event. Hide the dice. Let's interact here. Three of hearts. I was like, wait, we haven't we had this already? We have not. Three of hearts. Uh, this is hearts, right? Yes. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Uh, you pass an old church. The stained glass window shattered and the wooden doors hanging off the hinges. Were you religious before times? What about now? Do you think that anyone was ever really listening? Uh, that's a deep, 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 deep question. And it says pull from the tower. So let's do that first. And we are at 8D10. Okay. And show. Plus minus zero. So we are staying here. from the tower eight dice left oh, I forgot to do this event one you see a destroyed church are you religious was there ever oh my God. are you still are you now religious? Religious. Uh, okay, and then we need to take the dice away again. Because a silly little goober like me keeps forgetting. Alright. So. Or is amongst the dust. Why, why do you think it is among? Marzell, though. Is he a religious person or not? Or was he? And was he? I'd say he really wasn't. Yeah, okay, let's go with that. So, 
Let's start with this. Marzel. Shredded. Throw the... The lap. Tated church. He had never really been a believer. Even though he had never said it out loud. If there was a god, uh, if there was a god, Marzel waged, it wasn't, wasn't the ones, wasn't one of the ones humans prayed to. This can seem like the ending of any religions he knew. This was more like a schism in nature, a new time. There was no God required for apocalyptic events. Dinosaurs had been king before. Humans had been kings after. And now, Marzell didn't know who was king. The world kept taking. What the times of humans was gone. As much as Marzell knew. The world is a massive place. The chance that only he survived was very slim, he knew. But it didn't help the loneliness. If there was 10,000 kilometers between the two survivors, there was that was literally like no different than being alone there could surely be many last humans ever alive this was just the mindset not necessarily the universal fact all right he is very done well not very done oh whoa, whoa, whoa. what was hurting so much my wrist what's that about okay I'm like turning it and it's hurting a lot I feel like I've done like less computer stuff these days as well. So how come it's like hurting? That's very weird. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Not very interesting. We aren't really delving very deep into the emotions here, like we were in sweaters by Hedgehog. And this is more of a fast, well, fast paced is a wrong word because we have a lot of events to go. Let's just start the next ones then. Fourth set of events. 
What does our dice companion tell us? One D6, please. Hey, we get two this time. That is a lot more than one. Two events. Event one. All right, hide the dice. Uh, let's interact here. So we need two cards. And our first one is five of clubs. That's the first one. First one we've got as well. Uh, and I forgot already what it is. It is five of spades, yes. Five of spades. Clubs, I mean clubs. You remember a recurring nightmare that you had as a child. In the dream, you are a deer pursued by hunters until you're shot with arrow and your still beating heart is ripped out of your chest cavity. Since remembering, if a trouble sleeping, afraid the dream will return. What brings up the memory? Do you think it's just a coincidence that you remember this now? Pull from the tower. All right, 8d10, let's go. Should probably have like two of these things. I don't have to. Every time changed. Ooh, we decreased by three. There you go. Now it starts going down a lot. I uh, pulled from the tower. Five dice left. All right, event one. Nightmare returns. Used to dream of being hunted as a deer. Is it a sign? Or just a dream? Huh? I feel like Marzell just. We just had the event in the church, so we don't really feel like. Marcel still becomes any religious or believing in fate here. So instead... Well, we'll just say he, th he thinks it must be a coincidence. Marcel... Well, skipped awake by his dreams by a dream from his youth one he hadn't remembered in ages one he hadn't dreamt since starting his career He had been hunted as a deer. No memory of what had spurred such a dream into existence. I couldn't help but draw comparison to the end of the elk when he had first exited the bunker. A flesh horn had been seared into his memory. He feared that now when he recalled this 
he would dream of being eaten alive by nature's new creation the old out the new in it definitely wasn't a coincidence that he remembered this now time had passed but it was still the thing that was seared in his head he had time to think now he had food he had shelter and hadn't seen anything super dangerous Heroes in a while. Now the true danger was himself and the thoughts that popped into his head. Ah, that's very good. Very, very nice. Let's go to the event two email. Well, after a sip of water. That's very, very, very much what I like. Cool human being. Well, that's no very different thing to say. Well, you guys just sit down and feel like gravity hits you just different. Like it just feels like you're sitting like three times heavier than prior. It's very weird. Oh, and I left left the dies here again. Oops. Well, at least I'm reading out loud what I'm. Well, I'm going ahead. All right, event number two. Let's forge on. So we want to see the next card. Eight of spades. All right. You are bit by a creature resembling a serpent. Venom courses through your veins and causes you to hallucinate. Memories of the past morphing with your new reality. When you awake next, you're covered in cold sweat, and the contents of your stomach have been emptied beside you. What did you see in your visions? Do you think there are any deeper meaning in them? Alright, let's pull from the tower again. And we were at five dice left. So we are entering the territory where it is possible. Where it is starting to be in the realms of possibility that we're straight up lose out. Alright, none changed. Event two. Bit by... A serpent-like creature started hallucinating and emptied your stomach. Any real meaning or just hallucinations? What did you see? Pulled from... The tower. Uh, yeah, I think I forgot the dice again. But pull from the tower. Uh, five left. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Alright. So. What did we see? What would our man see? He could see, I guess, what well, he's really wishing for is someone to talk to.
Hmm. It was bad. And he had feared the worst when the cold sweat began. He had begun shaking. The shaking soon lulled him into a trance of sorts. The visions came to him soon after. It was of a world filled with thoughts. Thoughts with no mouths to say them, no ears to hear them. Well, the trip was nothing. Uh, not while the trip. Words were impossible conveying how he felt there, how he felt here, he realized. He had thoughts, but no one to tell them to. The world had a bunch of thoughts, but no humans left to form them. If there was any meaning to them, it was that he was alone. Alright. Event set number five. I think. Yes. And how many events will we find here? One D six. And we're back to six events. All right. Nice. Let's remember to remove the dice. And let's interact here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the first one is three of clubs. Mm, where do I want to go first? So here. Six events. Event number one. And it was three of, of, of clubs. You have begun to sleepwalk. The first time you do it, you wake dangerously close to a plummeting drop. How do you prevent yourself from straying from the safety of the camp? Pull from the tower. Alright, back to rolling it is. And 5d10. Joint. And we are at four dice. Pulled from the the tower. Four dice left. Cool. Uh, yes. You have st started sleepwalking. 
waking up in more dangerous places after the other. How do you stop yourselves? Yourself. Yourself. So even more. Alright, I'll grab a couple of cough drops here. I'll do this event and I'll take a tiny break. Flat my mouth and throat, I guess, more than mouth. Not really, my mouth could go on jabbering for a long time. The throat is the one that really doesn't want to keep up. It's not as interested in the thing. I mean, completely forgot. Forgot to use any of my secret words today. So that'll be a bit hard to remember. Or guess. I mean. Scan really. Yeah, test. What's it called? Can't really. Well, whatever. Brain, brain, no good. Brain, no good. Uh, here, I'm supposed to check. Oh, there you go. All right, next event. No wait, no, no, we're still in the sleepwalking. Not next. Okay. Marzel. Uh, let's unbold this. Marcel woke up beside the drop from the fourth floor of an office building. The one he had decided to sleep in for the night. He thought himself safer where a quadrupedal? Uh, something close to that. Quadrupedal. Creatures had less business in showing up. He was the danger this time. He wondered if the sleepwalking was somehow caused by the venom from the serpent from a week ago. He had tried tying himself with a rope to the bed, but the sleepwalking Marzel was just as cape as the awake one. Sleeping one had untied the knots. And left to wander. Mm. It took several nights of tries before he figured out that having something over his head that uh, head specifically something in uh, what are those called can't can't really imagine like several strips of cloth kind of like the ones you have like as an insect 
net on your door. I don't know what those are called. I haven't really seen those in m many years either. But something similar to those. Mimic the feeling of someone touching your face. Or like a, a net or specifically something that uh, tickled. A branch with leaves. Or a garment cut into strips. That kind of felt like kind of remotely. That remotely felt like hands. Touching. He was safe ish again for now. All right, next event. Event number two. What do we have in store for? And I forgot the dice. Ten out of ten execution. Absolute banger to have everything hidden. All right, card deck. And it's the Ten of Hearts. Ten of Hearts tells us what? Hey, we don't need to pull from the tower this time. A plastic toy truck sits lonely on the sidewalk. It's child never to return. Did you once have plans for your future? What did you want out of life? Does it pain you to think about that now? We've talked about this before as well, so it'll be easy and a quick one at that. Uh, you saw a child's toy. Did you have plans for the future? Uh, let's scroll it down. And I did take it away. Yes, I did take the dice away. Perfect. Right, so, Charlie saw you have plans for the future. Moselle thought every once in a while. Especially when he had the luck of finding coffee. And. And the courage to boil it in a fire. Now, with his coffee in hand, one he still would have preferred with milk. He thought about what mornings with coffee in hand would be like. Did he want someone to be with him? Was there supposed to be someone sitting in silence in laughter? Or just amble companionship. Marzell had been alone for over a year outside already. Not to mention the year he had been alone on the inside of the bunker. Not to triple down and mention how alone he had been at the helm of his company.
he enjoyed having someone to talk to. Well, talk with. He wasn't much of a share. Marzell didn't bottle up his emotions, but he had put them to good use throughout the years. He had his own tricks to pull through. His a well, whoops. Uh, his answer, if someone now walked through the door, was yes. At least for a bit. Please, anyone. Ah, that's that's really good. It's a really good ending. If I could write properly, that'd be pretty good. Event number three. Let's check what cards we have in store for this one. All right. That is a queen of clubs. As you sleep, you dream of hunting, your heart pounds, the adrenaline courses through your veins, you dream of wrenching flesh from bone, the scent of iron filling the air. When you awake, there is fur between your teeth and still drying blood on your chest. What do you do when you wake to find yourself in this state? You try to go about your day as normal, pull from the tower. All right, so we are getting somewhere here. Uh, you dream of hunting. You awake with fur between your teeth and blood on your chest. How do you deal with this? Uh, pulled from the tower. Let's see how many dice we have left. If any. I think we were at four last time. And nice. We lost none, we gained none. Four dies remaining. All right. What are we looking for? We are just about just about. I lost my turn of thought. All right, hunting. So we had just been having sleepwalking after the poison. Would Marzel think he's changing, or does he just think it's a sleepwalking thing and he just found something to bite? But how would he catch something, unless it's already dead? But if it's already dead, why would he have blood all over him? Well, no, he would still have blood over him. Hmm. Let's do it, let's do it this way. Maybe Marcel had been wrong about why there was no humans left. Well, not completely. But what if... But what if... The fur beneath his teeth was... A human. What if he was turning 
into something like the flesh horn. What if? What if? The... This was one of Marzell's hardest mornings. He hadn't thought of meeting the end by his own doing. But now he thought it might be better. Did he want to lose himself? Did he want to go into the ether like his parents? The thought of losing his mind was unbearable. He had already set aside enough money to we is it Switzerland if Alzheimer's ever struck him as well as his parents. But no, no, he had lived this long. He had the burden of potentially being the last human. He had to scream as long as he could. Scream out to the futility of the universe. Hmm. All right. So we're here. we're getting there too. Breaking Marzell. We're getting closer to where he is not left with everything he started with. Very cool. All right. Event number four for this set. <laughs> it just feels like being much much more than this two thousand words here. But it is the two thousand words. Ah, next card. And I forgot the dice again. Oh my god. Next card. Interact, please. The King of Hearts. Oh, alright, so we're gonna meet another one of the big beasts. Let's see what that is. King of Hearts. While scavenging through a destroyed dollar store, you come across various supplies and canned foods. You'll have to pry open the cans with your knife, but it'll be worth it. You've lived so long off the land, hunting the twisted creatures that roam, that the idea of an old can of creamed corn makes tears well up in your eyes. Canned goods are known for their shelf life, and you admit that you don't know much about food safety. But any taste of the before times is worth the potential sickness. Cool. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, if this was the fourth, fourth king, we would have drawn. We would have died somehow to food poisoning, which would be hilarious. But it is not what we are dying to. Uh, canned food for the first time. In in a year. All right, let's let's jump a lot forward. Let's go. Let's go a year forward again. Did where? When did we set the time? It had been a year. Uh, oh yeah, one prior third. Third event of this set. Oh, second event. Sorry. Uh, Canon food for the first time in a year.
<laughs> I keep making it bald. All right, okay, okay, there you go. Uh, he couldn't believe it. He had hated corn through his childhood. But now it was such glee, such joy to eat something processed, something with sweetness he had yearned for. Tears. Tears were about to ruin the sweetness with their soul. But nothing, and I mean nothing, could slake the joy that Marzell was feeling at this moment. I think that's enough for that event. Don't need to establish that much lore every single time. All right, event number five. Let's let's get a new one. Two more kings and we're done. Next card is a jack of spades. And that's in the start. You come across the putrid remains of a beast you have never seen before. Claw marks disfigure its flesh and its entrails spill from gouges carved deep into its abdomen. What do you think happened to this creature? How will you prevent the same from happening to you? Pull from the tower. Alright. Let us roll the four dice we have. And whoo, we lost two dice. We're down to two. We're almost dead. We're almost dead. Let's see how Marzel, if he survives. All right, let's write this down. Pulled from the tower. Two dice remain. And our event was a massive beast lays dead. Something even greater killed it. How do you survive? All right, and then dies away. Haha, I remembered. I'm growing as a human being. Fantastic. And we don't have bolt on. A carcass of size Marzel thought could only exist under the surface of the ocean. It was a creature the size of a blue whale. Was long dead. The smell festering from the creature permeated the whole downtown area of this city. It had large gashes on its side. Claws on the stone around it. But curiously, nothing clearly broken anywhere else. The houses in surprisingly Great shape. Whatever it had fought had to have been 
as dangerous as the beast that was dead. Flesh, a uh, horn, had nothing on this and its uh, foe. This made Marcel even more sure the time of humans was gone. Gone. Marzel didn't know what he'd do to survive, but he knew he'd try. That he knew. Alright, nice. Nice. That's, that's actually really cool. We went from the event number three where he dreamt of hunting. Hunting and the dementia went to him getting some food like longer. In a longer time. Longer time period forward when he gets some finally some good eats. Finds a bit of himself. More will to live. And here at the face of a massive creature. He still sees that he needs to continue. He needs to keep going. Very nice. Let's do the last event of the block. Event 6. Alright. And that is a, a 9 of clubs. Even when you sleep, you wake feeling exhausted, as if you hadn't slept at all. You nod off at an inopportune moment, causing injury to yourself. What happens? How have you hurt yourself? Pull from the tower. Alright, we are only two dice left. If we roll two of ones or twos, we will be done for. The story of Marzel will come to a close. Let's see. Oh. Alright, one dies left. We still live. Pull from the tower. One dies left. Scary times. You have... Even... When you sleep, you wake up tired. You hurt yourself while nodding off in the day. All right, and let's take the dice away. I feel like Marcel's story is about to come to an end soon. All right. What did we fall asleep? Hmm. Where would we be clambering about? I think it would be somewhere in the city. But what are we doing? Like, I don't really think. Food stores are you generally like found on the like lower levels of buildings as well. Well, what are we doing? It's not so it's not food related. Maybe it's something a bit dumb. Alright, let's do something a bit dumb. He wants to climb high up in a building in a lonely skyscraper that's still standing. He wants to find the highest spot and gaze gaze on the world. That sounds perfect. Marcel had been deathly tired now for a few weeks. Even sleep didn't help. He didn't sport a fever. And nothing else seemed wrong. Except for the lack of energy. 
he didn't sleep for less but was never but the energy never returned heck He didn't have... He didn't think. That was his problem. Maybe he couldn't think. At this point in time. But he had... Upon stumbling... Upon the last... Standing... Skyscraper in downtown realized that he wanted to be up high he needed to see the world he needed to view it from another perspective tiredness and climbing don't mix. He was slowly moving along the outer wall. On the safest part, maybe that is one of the reasons. He didn't focus enough his eyes closed and opened in a burst when his hand didn't find purchase he panicked and fell if it wasn't for his backpack a trusty backpack he would have careened off the edge down far below Marcel truly felt his luck was running out he couldn't have many life-saving opportunities like this left very nice let us grab on to the next set of events Why is my voice dying I feel like I can properly hear myself when I have headphones on uh, ma -ma 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 -ma. No, I think it's all right. Uh, it's, it's it's a bit weird, but but it's all right. I don't think it's we're in that close yet. Hmm. All right, we're so close to them. Well, I mean, we can roll multiple times a, not one or two, I guess. It's only a one in five chance we lose next time. But we are at set number six. Event set number six. And let us roll a one a D six. For how many cards we pull. And that is four cards. Four events event number one go away dice and let us pull four cards one two three four first one we got a seven of diamonds
here. There is a ringing in your ears that will not stop. It is distracting at the best of times and the painful at the worst. How do you attempt to stop the ringing? Pull from the tower. All right. Immediately we're hit with the first chance of losing Marzell. We're rolling a 1d10. And if we roll a 1 or 2, Marcel is gone. Any other number he lives? 10, however, we gain another dice. Let's see what happens. A 7. We live, but don't gain another dice. Ears keep on ringing. It hurts. Ears ring. Ears ring. Ring ring. Marzell feels like he is losing his mind in the most annoying fashion. One simple tone. Not even at a time, but all the time. Mm. He felt like he was in X files. Like he was about to die due to the sound ringing in his head. He needed to move west. He moved west. It hurt. It rang. Ring. Ring. He moved west. It hurt. It rang. Ring, ring. Ah, uh, we forgot to write about rolled tower. Uh, pulled from the tower. One dies left. I feel like this is a good, good enough for us here as well. So event number two, please. We don't need more than that for the ears ringing type thing. Uh, next card then. Five of hearts. You come across something that reminds you of a broken promise you made to someone from your past. What is it that you see? What was the promise? Who was this person to you? Pull from the tower. Another pull from the tower and a one where we don't have an easy exit out of either. All right, 1d10 time. Ones and twos were out. Tens we gain a dice. Other numbers we just live on. And that's a two. So, we'll be writing an end to Marzell. And... You found something that reminded you of a promise you once made. To whom? And what did they mean to you? Pulled from the tower. Zero. Left. 
you die. Alright, now we come to a very hard part then. So how do we end our story here? Do we see the promise when we're in the mouth of some beast? Oh, yes, I feel like that's a good one. He had tried. Like he... Promised. To himself. When he... Had seen the gargantuan beast felled in the middle of the city. He had pledged to himself that he would try. And god darn did he try. With broken bones, he scampered on even with a leg so mushed he didn't even know which part turn even when the claws pierced his throat Did he not give up? His throat... No sound came from him. But his eyes... Sore. Burned. His eyes, they burned. Right until the very end. Well, that was the story of Marzal. It's kind of crazy, I know. Weird, even though this is not a very meaningful ending. Almost, almost, almost to the point of tearing up. Just, just a little bit, even if, if it is a bit silly. Silly type of ending to his story. All right. I'll take a tiny little water break and then I'll try to read through this whole text we got going for us. So I'll be right back in just a few minutes.
And that was a quick one. I'm back. So, story of Marzell. Let's get to the beginning. I uh, wonder how should I do it? Should I read out the prompt as well or whatever I wrote about it? Probably not. I don't, I don't really think so. feel like this is enough with just reading in text. Marzell eyed the coffee cups still on the table in his previously favorite diner. One he used to own. The thought of what had happened to the lovely Vader Gretel, rather, the life of the place, had crossed his mind multiple times. There had been no time to call anyone to his bunker. The radio only blasted a warning for 60 seconds, and there was no time. After Marzel had realized the end of times was here, there was only three seconds left. Before silence, the world had fallen to silence. The air outside the bunker was fresh, yet now that he breathed more freely, he noticed the stench of iron, one that was familiar, yet almost forgotten. It was blood. Right outside, a massive creature with horns of flesh and ragged bones. It crunched a mighty elk corpse in its fangs, sinew snapping, bones crushed. Yet. Another 60 seconds, and Marcel was alone in the bunker again. Marcel took another week to gather more courage to venture outside again. He didn't want to meet the gargantuan danger. He had thought long and hard. It's a weird thing to be able to name a creature. It was a childlike wish of his that it would be cool to discover a new creature, a species. But now he thought it was silly. Something he never should have wished for. He named the creature Fleshhorn. Very unimaginative, but the only thing he could think about. Marzel found only the bare minimum of supplies in town. It seemed some humans must have survived the instant death. Most of the food was gone in the stores. He had to go to the next town over, and only when he got there did he realize how surprising it was that he had not seen any human remains. Here in the neighboring town there was but one skeletal remain, missing most of its leg. You could see how jagged the edges were. He hoped the person's end, person's end had been swift. Marcel thought that it must be the other creatures, like the flesh horn, that was behind the disappearance of all remains. There had been no remains left of the elk when he came out from the bunker either. From the bunker after the second time. Heat kept drenching Marcel in sweat. Water supply was running dangerously low. Marcel had pushed it forward for too long already. The air didn't cool like he had hoped, but instead it might have become even hotter. Marcel decided to start trek at sunrise. Night was probably too dangerous, he wagered. He didn't want to run in to no flesh horn, if he could help it. The long trek didn't only bring heat stroke, it brought a new type of enemy. A swarm of gargantuan bugs. Marcel wasn't squeamish around bugs. In fact, he had been one of those kids who loved bugs and handling them. So at first he didn't pay too much heed, though they were just a swarm of locusts or some sort. But in thought, but indeed they were after him. When the swarm covered the sun and soon Marzel he ate. And soon Marzel. They ate pinch after pinch, all drawing blood. It was like tongues stuck to his skin, ripping pieces with them. And for each drop of blood that he lost, thirst was quenched in the bugs. With nowhere to go, he hoped throwing the water in the air and all over him might give him some repose. And it did, but just for a moment. In the end, Marcel had, had to bear mo with most of it, before managing to cover himself in the tarp he had brought for night cover. 
only having to deal with a few ten of them inside of it, instead of thousands and thousands outside. At breakfast, Marzel pondered what had laid the perfectly round eggs. If they hadn't been inside of what looked like a bird's nest, he probably wouldn't even have picked them out as eggs in the first place. Their taste was egg. Marzel didn't know what he expected, <laughs> but this was welcome. He hoped this wasn't any crazy creature that could now find him based on that he had consumed the energy of their young, of their unborn. The eggs were too large for any bird so far in the country, so far into the middle of the country, and roundness was very much not normal. Spheres, twice the size of billiard balls. Whatever this feathered creature was, was most probably wasn't friendly. <laughs> this time, maybe it was flesh feather. Oh, the whole thought had disgusted him. Both of his parents had already lost all their capabilities to understand the world around them before the apocalypse, their minds slowly deteriorating by one of the worst diseases known to man, Alzheimer's. He hoped they had gone quick, and none the wiser. They had been all he had. After all, he hadn't had much time to start a new life. He had barely found himself. No time to find someone to love forever. Selling the company, his life's work had left him empty, but satisfied. This new town had been his start, and he had made some connections. Like the waitress, hostess and the barber, but they were nothing more than friends. Maybe it was the air. Maybe it was the food he ate, the drink he drank. But he was sporting a massive headache where even thinking about the pain was difficult. He had seen the times during the pandemic, loneliness and haughtiness that had led to death. Marcel ramaged through several stores through willpower alone. The pain dulled his vision, but he was very clear in his goal. He found some masks to wear and did so promptly. He didn't really know if it was wearing the masks or the chains of scenery, but his headache was gone a few days later. There was some remorse in that Marcel had to be alone. Some shame that he couldn't save anyone. Even though he knew there had been no time. Marcel treaded through the Marzell treaded through the dilapidated church. He had never really been a believer, even though he had never said it out loud. If there was a god, Marzell waged it wasn't one of the ones humans prayed to. This didn't seem like the ending of any religions he knew. This was more like a schism in nature, a new time. There was no god required for apocalyptic events. Dinosaurs had been king before, humans had been king after. And now? Marcel didn't know who was king. The world kept ticking, but the times of humans was gone. As much as Marcel knew, as much as Marcel knew the world is a massive place, the chance that only he survived was very slim. But it didn't help the loneliness. If there was 10,000 kilometers between the two survivors, that was literally like no different than being alone. There could surely be many last humans ever alive. This was rather just a mindset, not necessarily the universal fact. Marcel was kept awake by a dream from his youth, one he hadn't remembered in ages, one he hadn't dreamt in starting his career. He had been hunted as a deer. No memory of what had spurred such a dream into existence. But he couldn't help but draw a comparison to the end of the elk when he had first exited the bunker. The flesh horn had been seared into his memory. 
He feared that now when he recalled this, he would dream of being in and alive. By nature's new creation, the old out or the new in. It definitely wasn't a coincidence that remembered this now. Time had passed, but it was still the thing that was se seared in his head. He had time to think now. He had food, he had shelter, and he hadn't seen anything super dangerous in a while. Now the true danger was himself and the thoughts that popped into his head. Water, 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 water. He was bit, and he had feared the worst when the cold sweat began. He had begun shaking. The shaking soon lulled him into a trance of sorts. The visions came to him soon after. It was of a world filled with thoughts. Thoughts with no mouths to say them. No ears to hear them. Words were impossible to convey how he felt there. How he felt here, he realized. He had thoughts, but none to tell them to. The world had a bunch of thoughts, but no humans left to form them. If there was any meaning to them, it was that he was alone. Marzell woke up beside the, drop beside the drop from the fourth floor of an office building. The one he had decided to sleep in for the night. He thought himself safer, where quadrupedal creatures had less business in showing up. He was the danger this time. He wondered if the sleepwalking was some somehow caused by the venom from the serpent from a week ago. He had tried tying himself with a rope to the bed, but the sleepwalking Marzell was just as capable as the awake one. The sleeping one had untied the knots and left to wander. It took several nights of tries before he figured out that Having something over his head, specifically something that tickled, a branch with leaves or a garment cut into strips that remotely felt like hands touching him. He was safe-ish again. For now. Marcel thought every once in a while, especially when he had the luck of finding coffee. And the courage to boil it in a fire. Now with his coffee in hand, one he still would have preferred with milk. He thought about what mornings with coffee in hand would be like. Did he want someone to be with him? Was there supposed to be someone sitting in silence, in laughter, or just amble companionship? Marcel had been alone for over a year outside already, not to mention the year he had been alone inside of the bunker. Not to triple down and mention how alone he had been, at the helm of his company. He enjoyed having someone to talk to. Well, talk with. He wasn't much of a sharer. Marcel didn't bottle up his emotions either, but he had to, but he had put them to good use throughout the years. He had his own tricks to pull through. His answer if someone now walked through the door was yes, at least for a bit. Please, anyone. Maybe Marzel had been wrong about why there was no humans left. Well, not completely. But what if? But what if the fur beneath his teeth was human? What if he was turning into something like the flesh horn? What if? What if? This was one of Marzel's hardest mornings. He hadn't thought of meeting the end by his own doing. But now he thought it might be better. Did he want to lose himself? Did he want to go into the ether like his parents? The thought of losing his mind was unbearable. He had already set aside enough money to visit Switzerland if Alzheimer's ever struck him as well as his parents. But no. No, he had lived this long. He had the burden of potentially being the last human. He had to scream as long as he could. Scream out to the futility of the universe. He couldn't believe it. He had hated corn through his childhood. 
But now it was such glee, such joy, to eat something processed, something with sweetness he had yearned for. Tears were about to ruin the sweetness with their salt, but nothing, and I mean nothing, could slake the joy that Marzel was feeling at this moment. A carcass of size Marzell thought only could exist under the surface of the ocean. It was a creature the size of a blue whale. It was long dead. The smell festering from the creature permeated the whole downtown area of the city. It had large gashes on its side, claws on the stone around it, but curiously nothing clearly broken anywhere. The houses in surprisingly great shape. Whatever it had fought had to have been as dangerous as the beast that was then. Fleshhorn had nothing on this and its foe. This made Marzal even more sure that time of humans was gone. Gone. Marzal didn't know what he'd do to survive, but he knew he'd try. That he knew. Marzell had been deadly tired now for a few weeks. Even sleep didn't help. He didn't sport a fever and nothing else seemed wrong, except for the lack of energy. He didn't sleep for less, but the energy never returned. He didn't think. That was his problem. Maybe he couldn't think at this point in time. But he had upon stumbling... But he had upon stumbling on the last standing skyscraper in downtown, realized that he wanted to be up high. He needed to see the world. He needed to view it from another perspective. Tiredness and climbing don't mix. He was slowly moving along the outer wall. One of the safest parts. Maybe that's one of the reasons. He didn't focus enough. His eyes closed and then opened in a burst when his hands didn't find purchase. He panicked and fell. If it wasn't for his backpack, the trusty backpack, he would have careened off the edge, down far below. Marzell truly felt his luck was running out. He couldn't have many life-saving opportunities like this left. Ears ring, ears ring, ring ring. Marzell fell, feels like he is losing his mind. In the most annoying fashion, one simple tone. Not even one at a time, but all of the time. He felt like he was in X-Files, like he was about to die due to the sound ring in his head. He needed to move west. He moved west. It hurt. It rang. Ring, ring. He moved west. It hurt. It rang. Ring, ring. He had tried, like he promised himself, when he had seen the gargantuan beast felled in the middle of the city. He had pledged to himself that he would try, and gosh darn did he try. With broken bones he scampered on, even with a leg so mushed he didn't know which part hurt. Even when the claws pierced his throat, did he not give up. No sound came from him, but his eyes burned. His eyes, they burned. Right until the very end. And that's the end of Marzel's story. And the end of this playthrough of uh, Darling Amongst the Dust. That was a pretty fun game. I really do like this system. It's, it's quite simple. Quite simple. I might have to fiddle around with uh, my tower. I don't know how many... What is the average amount of pulls meant for a Jenga tower compared, like, uh, with, well, with the Jenga tower. Like, how many pulls do they usually get from a Jenga tower before it falls? Well, it doesn't have to be as close. Doesn't matter, of course. It's still only a game for fun. So, if I don't reach the end, I don't reach the end. And even the rules said that uh, you're not really supposed to win the odds are very much not in your favor. A lot of solo journaling experiences don't are not about winning. 
well, not that RPGs in general are either, but very much telling stories and about you in general. There's a lot of feelings involved usually. Uh, open up to a lot of things you didn't think about before. And it's more freedom than just pure writing anything. Well, not more freedom, but you strip it down to its bare elements like this. And I do, I do really enjoy that. I had a really good time. I think I'll do... I don't think I'll be continuing Sweaters by Hedgehog yet, at least. I think I have... Oh, it's much less words. Okay. They're just very, very long comparatively the uh, every event in Sweaters by Hedgehog. That that more to me than this felt like a book. This this one felt more like the journaling games that I'm used to uh, of getting like a bit. Depending on a bit, but usually they're like decently short. A few paragraphs of text for each event. Maybe a bit longer at the beginning when you're ambitious. But this felt, this felt, this felt right. And Sweaters by Hedgehog felt more like I was writing a book of short stories with... I, even, I just wrote like two, two things. I'm supposed to write more. I wrote two things and they already felt like a very comprehensive story of of shrub the uh, hedgehog in my story this one is good though I, I liked it it, it has some very cool character building elements with with how Marcel's parents had uh, had from dementia and then he was scared of it and from going scared of going out into Fighting with every ounce for survival. Every breath he took as a extra try at living. That was very nice. Let me I true here while I am here. I'll check out what other games did I have in my collection. That can be played. Everyone deserves shelter. What is that about? Uh huh. That is a. Uh, oh, these entries should tell the story of your hermit crab's journey to find a new shell and all the friends they made along the way. Altruism as the heart of everyone deserves shelter, as everyone has the right to be safe and have to have shelter. As your hermit crab meets others along the way, consider how you can help them with their troubles, ensuring that they and you have the justice you deserve. Hmm. Maybe? Maybe, maybe, maybe? Not exactly what I'm... Maybe looking for, I think. I think the lighthouse keeper is more interesting. It has a bit more of the same elements as here. We're much more deeply focused on one man's feelings in that one. Or, well, one person's feelings, but not one man's. But everyone deserves shelter, is definitely not a bad idea. Not as epistolary. Uh, all right. Uh huh. Uh huh. What do we do here? Center on stories, narrative your characters. At the moment, they know that skill systems. Blah 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 blah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, okay. So it doesn't have a story in itself. We just play out a story of our own. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, this is like the base system of... of the thing. Yeah, 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 makes sense. 
The Van Vich. Oh, that was the one I'm pretty interested in. Uh, I should have that one as well. The Van Vich. Where is that? Mm -hmm. uh, is this not the one I thought it was? It's not. There's two Van Witch games I have? That's crazy. That is crazy. Oh, one, one other one that was pretty interesting was... Uh, well, there's the tea shelf. Where you uh, drink tea. With someone and then you see how... How their uh, relationship goes. And then well, we're trying to find what their relationship is. Are they friends? Are they compatriots? And something. And then something happens. And then we finalize what their relationship is at that point. It was pretty interesting as well. Although technically I don't probably want to play it as a two-player game. But it's fine to play it by myself. Uh, Shepherd is the one. Uh, what is this one? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is exactly the one. Shepherd's Crook is this one. It's called. You're like you're playing the staff. Of a scepter, and then you're uh, so you, we are just an inam inanimate object, but we're like passed from a keeper to another. And then, uh, some sort of shepherd like the shepherd can be for anything for people, animals, sentient plants, animate objects. Whatever you like. So it could be also a magic staff or like a necromancer or something. That's also very interesting. I have a lot of these I really want to play. Very interesting. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I haven't decided yet. I'll decide on a whim then when I do next time play. That seems like as good an idea as any. Seems like as good an idea as any. All right. Perfect. I'll had a blast. I'll go off in to the night in a blaze of glory and I'll return tomorrow again. Great. It was great having y'all here. And I will see you around. Vile Neon, out.